Hello everyone, and welcome back to Mystery Archive. I'm Cameron Johnson, and because of the case we're talking about today, a discussion has been started in Brazil about changing the legal age of criminal responsibility from 18 down to 16. This is the story of Liana and Felipe. As always, please leave a like, comment and subscribe because it really does help the reach of our channel. And follow us on our social media at mystery underscore archive. So now, let's get right into today's case. Today's case happened in 2003 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The couple, Liana Friedenbach, 16 years old, and Felipe Café, 19 years old, decided to go camping. They were students, met at school, and had been together for about two months. Even with the whole weekend planned for the camp, Liana had not told her father, lawyer Ari Friedenbach, that she would go camping with her boyfriend, because she was afraid of him forbidding her, since they were only at the beginning of their relationship. So, she said she would spend the weekend on a bus tour to Ila Bella with young people from the Paulista Israelite congregation, which is 200 kilometers from the capital of Sao Paulo. Felipe also did not tell his mother that he would go camping with his girlfriend. He said he would go with his friends, but he did inform her of the correct place for the camp, Embuguasu, 36 kilometers from the capital. On October 31st, 2003, a Friday, the couple headed for the planned weekend. During the night, they stayed together until they took the bus at 5am on the Tiete Highway towards Embuguasu. Liana's dad called her in the morning just to see if everything was okay, and on the phone, Liana said that everything was fine with the trip. Already in the city, while walking towards the village of Santa Rita, where they would later camp, they started to attract the attention of the other inhabitants, because they clearly did not dress as simply as the others, as well as carrying many things with them. The couple arrived at the site, pitched the tent, and quietly enjoyed their first day. During the night, the couple's nightmare began. Wake up, wake up! Give me everything you have! A boy cut the tent and announced the assault. Beside him, another man was pointing a gun. Liana and Felipe did not have enough money or valuable items to make those men happy, and so the criminals decided to kidnap the couple. But who were these men? Roberto Aparecido Alves Cardoso, a 16-year-old teenager better known by the name of Champina, had a learning disability, had left school in the fourth grade of elementary school, and worked as a caretaker's assistant, earning 150 reais a month which at the time was a little more than half of a minimum wage salary. Champigna liked to roam the bush, hunt animals, drink, smoke, and was well known in the city for causing trouble. The other was Paulo Cesar da Silva Marquez, who weeks earlier, walking around the region, had stopped at a small repair shop asking for a job and ended up painting a refrigerator. As he had done a good job, the shop owner hired him to paint his house. Their robbery was planned because Champigna and Paolo had seen the couple walking around the small town and as they carried field materials, they deduced that the couple were going to camp. It took the criminals less than a day to think about this robbery and it was not difficult for them to find the couple and commit the crime. So, taking Liana and Felipe through the forest for more than two kilometers with their faces covered with towels, they arrived at a filthy house where they would keep the couple captive. This house belonged to Antonio Caetano, a caretaker of over 50 years of age who was known to the criminals, but Antonio was not there. Liana and Felipe's captivity was a highly unhealthy and unhygienic situation. The criminal duo separated the couple into different rooms as soon as they got there. Fearing what the criminals might do, Liana tried to do something. What do you want? Money? My family can get it for you! But the men had other plans. On the first day of the kidnapping, on the 1st of November, Liana was attacked several times while her boyfriend remained trapped in the other room, unable to do anything. The next morning, they decided to go out with the couple on a forest trail. Paolo was holding Felipe, walking in front of Champigna, who was holding Liana. The two had decided that Felipe would be of no use. What was that? Just dealing with your little boyfriend. He won't be of any use. Paolo put Felipe on his knees and shot him in the back of the head with a shotgun. 
After that, Paolo went to Sao Paulo and left Liana in the power of Champina. Upon returning to captivity, Liana was attacked again. Liana was no longer expressing emotions. She was in complete shock. In Sao Paulo on Sunday night, Liana's father, lawyer Ari Friedenbach, called her cell phone. The connection did not complete, and Ari believed that due to the fact that Liana said she was in Ila Bella, a remote place where mobile connections don't work very well, that her phone was out of service. He then decided to wait for the bus to arrive at the congregation's bus stop. However, no bus has arrived. Starting to get very worried about the situation, Ari called a friend of Liana's. Listen, where is Liana? Mr. Friedenbach, I think she went out with the church of death. She already arrived? Girl, listen, Liana disappeared. She disappeared? Tell me what's going on. Mr. Friedenbach, Liana, she... I'm sorry, she went camping with the living in Bugasu. What? As it was already late, Ari thought they had missed the last scheduled bus and decided to drive to Mbuguasu himself to meet the couple. On this trip, Ari asked one of his friends to go with him. Arriving there, they searched for the couple in the city until 3am on Monday, until they decided to return to Sao Paulo and register a police report of the couple's disappearance. Not finding the couple anywhere, Ari thought that they were lost and called the COE, the Special Operations Command of the Military Police. Still on Sunday night, the owner of the house that was being used to keep the victims captive arrived. Antonio da Silva Caetano was accompanied by another man, Agnaldo Perez. The two had no idea what was going on. But when they arrived, Champina introduced Liana as his girlfriend. This one is my girlfriend, but you know what? You can do whatever you want with her. That night, Liana was assaulted about five times. During Monday, Champigna decided to go fishing and took Liana with him. By coincidence, Champigna's brother met them, but very scared, Liana didn't express herself or try to ask for help. Champigna, where have you been, man? Who's that girl? My girlfriend, what do you want? Look, mom's worried sick, she's been trying to call you. Tell her I'm fine, it's okay. Between the dawn of Monday, November 3rd, until Wednesday the 5th, the COE managed to find the couple's tent and belongings, including Liana's cell phone. This made Ori very worried. Ori, being influential in Sao Paulo, managed to mobilize the media, including the national press. Even a helicopter was provided to throw flyers with the couple's photo over the city of Mbuguasu. With all this movement towards the couple's search, on November 5th, a Wednesday, Champigna became aware of this and told Liana that she would be released. On the way through the undergrowth, Champigna, with a fish knife, inserted numerous blows onto the victim's neck, chest, and back. He only left the place once he was sure that Liana was dead. As Champigna was well known in the city for being involved in several problems, the police decided to look for him just to question him. Thus, on November 10th, Champigna was found and taken to the police station. There, he confessed to the crime without any show of remorse or regret, even after the police said the names of all those involved. He told everything in detail, and even took them to the crime scene. On November 14th, 2003, Paolo Cesar, Antonio Caetano, Antonio Matias, and Agnaldo Pires were arrested. At the trial, they received the following sentences. For private imprisonment and concealment of the murder weapon, Antonio Matias received six years in prison and a further one year, nine months and fifteen days. He has already served his sentence and now walks free. Agnaldo Perez received 47 years for... Paolo Cesar, responsible for the death of Felipe, got 110 years in prison for qualified murder, rape, kidnapping and private imprisonment. Antonio Caetano da Silva got 124 years in prison for the various rapes he committed against Liana. Champigna, being under 18 years old at the time, was sent to trial by the Child and Youth Court and not to the jury tribunal. According to Act 121 of the Brazilian Federal Constitution, a minor, someone under the age of 18, cannot be imprisoned for a term longer than three years. Thus, Champigna was apprehended but only admitted to prison for young offenders for a three-year term. This case especially opened up a new analysis for the re-evaluation of this law. 
After the fulfilment of this measure, there being no possibility of being punished more than once for the same criminal act, the solution that the public prosecutor found so that Champigny would not leave the sphere of state surveillance was to ask for civil interdiction. This request was accepted as it was accompanied by a medical report confirming that Champigny is unable to live socially. Thus, until today, Champigny lives at the Experimental Health Foundation. Ari Friedenbach, Liana's father, who is now a counsellor, has become part of groups that advocate for the reduction of the age of criminal responsibility. However, analysing the situation better with time, he now argues that the reduction of the age of majority to 16 years would only cause criminals to start attracting teenagers when they are younger, such as at 14 and 15 years old. Today, Ori works intensively in defence of the tightening of the punishments of minors who commit heinous crimes.